Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the climate on our beautiful planet Earth and specifically about this very radical or actually borderline crazy idea of potentially building rings around our planet to stop the global warming. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Alright, building rings around our planet is actually not that crazy. As a matter of fact, we uh, did this back in the 60s, as you may have uh, learned from one of the previous videos I made. And it was called uh, Project Westford. We actually had these very unusual rings around our planet that I'm going to try to simulate right now. That were supposed to protect... Uh, they were supposed to protect our... Uh, not our planet, but basically the United States from the potential attack. Um, by the Soviet Union uh, and the way that they were supposed to do this is to, by creating an, um, a kind of a ring of copper particles that would actually reflect radio waves that would allow uninterruptible communication. Long story short, it was a stupid idea. Anyway, moving on to another unusual idea. I'm not going to call it stupid yet, but uh, it is a very unusual idea. And the idea goes as follows. So let's actually maybe create a new climate simulation here. Uh, actually, let's do this one. And uh, here we're going to be looking at our planet Earth and uh, Universe Sandbox does a pretty good job at simulating climate based on the carbon uh, dioxide uh, amount in the atmosphere. And here it's known as PPMV or parts per uh, million of volume. And right now the temperature, the average temperature on the surface of Earth is about 15 degrees Celsius, 15 something. Okay, no, it's, it's about 15. As you increase PPMV, the temperature of our planet, the average temperature will decrease, uh, will increase as well. And um, with the increase of PPMV, you'll actually start noticing that some of the ice will start disappearing. And uh, unfortunately, the water level doesn't actually increase that much, but it is what's going to happen. And because of this, the planet Earth will actually be thrown into a very unusual, uh, very early climatic change that will result in, you know, a lot of hurricanes, a lot of climatic craziness here and there that has already actually kind of started, but to the more extreme um, from what we have today. And uh, these actually, there's actually several simulations that project how much carbon dioxide we might have in the atmosphere. One of the more simple ones I found is from this website called, um, I believe it's called learning.org. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it's called, oh, it's, it's called learner.org. And this is a carbon simulation where you can kind of just uh, run the simulation and it gives you mathematical representation of how much PPMV we'll have. Now in 2010, there was approximately 391 uh, average carbon dioxide. And by 2020, it will probably be about 415. Now, the average right now is about 409 and 410. So we are pretty close to that amount. And as you keep running this, you'll notice that it starts increasing more and more as the uh, coal and oil and gas is being taken from the soil and released into the atmosphere. And uh, some of this will obviously be absorbed by the trees, but you can also increase the forestation levels, meaning that uh, you can increase the level of trees we cut down. And so only one source will uh, will actually be the sink of carbon dioxide, and that's the ocean. Ocean can take up a lot of carbon dioxide, but it's very slow at that. And as you can see right now, the level of PPMV increases to like 1355 before we run out of coal finally, and then it kind of starts dropping off, but it will take hundreds of years to recover to uh, previous levels. So it's gonna take a while. But the highest PPMV here was 1355. Let's go to Universe Sandbox and let's see how hot the planet would actually get if this was the uh, the actual number. So I'm gonna click enter and let's let's watch the temperature graph here and let's see how hot our planet get, is going to get. Uh, now this will not obviously be right away, but don't forget this is not just about the temperature and the water levels. This is also about the fact that this uh, throws the climate into this crazy, crazy uh unpredictable behavior so things will just start going 
really extreme there will be a lot of really cold winters really super hot summers a lot of hurricanes and typhoons all over the world and some of them will be super powerful the temperature has now increased to or by about seven to eight degrees it's still going up though i think it will be about 10 yeah it'll be about plus 10 degrees celsius and uh, at this point, or even more, maybe even 11. At this point, uh, there's practically no ice in the Antarctica. Uh, there's no North Pole ice almost. And uh, a lot of ice in other regions like the Andes in South America has also disappeared as well. Because the temperature has now increased by 12 degrees Celsius. It's quite a lot. So uh, what these scientists propose is this. And this is actually... Uh, a kind of a general proposition that is technically possible. They basically propose uh, spending about six to possibly two hundred trillion dollars to launch a series of uh, different types of satellites. Well, first of all, some of these satellites will actually uh, be tiny, tiny pieces of um, sort of like basically refractive glass that would essentially start refracting or removing the sunlight that is coming from over there and the way it will look is something like this okay i guess that's a pretty good representation but we can add some more just for for effect here so right now there is a bunch of particles orbiting around our planet earth very similar to how i guess it would look on gas giants like saturn but they're in a more torical formation here so torus that is and uh, they're creating these miniature shadows on the surface of the planet. These shadows will obviously uh, cool down the planet because less sunlight is now going to be landing on the surface of the planet. But on the other side of the planet, these particles will actually reflect light and uh, make the night side of the planet a little bit brighter. As a matter of fact, they might create as much light as the moon uh, during the full moon, which can obviously create some problems for life on Earth, because a lot of life depends on these lunar cycles. But if you have these particles flying around, creating this artificial light, it might just confuse a lot of life. But let's not talk about that just yet. So this is actually possible. Uh, what you need to stabilize these satellites is you actually need to create a few other objects and we're going to do this right now you need to create slightly uh smaller sorry slightly bigger objects uh that would be kind of like miniature moons and we're going to do this by adding them automatically okay these are too big too big of a moon too big of a moon that that moon is destroying my my unfortunate particles that's not what i wanted to do what i wanted to create is several moons but once again i made a small mistake here and these moons are totally not doing what i wanted them to do let's uh, go back to the original simulation before things go bad for oh god i destroyed planet earth so this is actually my well, what might happen to this scenario here as well anyway that's not exactly what i wanted to do what i wanted to do is this let's do this again all right this is slightly better now what you might notice is that there's actually these three large asteroids orbiting along with the ring. And there's a purpose for them. This is actually what I was trying to create in the previous version of this. These uh, rocks act as stabilizers in the same way that Saturn has its moons stabilizing its tiny um, rings or particles inside the rings. So these would have to be distributed across the ring and they would act as essentially permanent stabilizers making sure that these tiny particles don't actually escape somewhere else. Uh, so if you actually look at Saturn, its rings are stabilized with uh, tiny moons inside the rings. So like Prometheus and Epimetheus, Janus, Pan, all of them, they're uh, acting on the ring particles and they're stabilizing them. So we could create this too, but obviously this will require some really massive objects in uh, the orbit around our planet. And the only way we could possibly achieve that is by well, essentially bringing asteroids from the outside of our um, Earth system. And so if we were to create a kind of a ring to essentially shadow our planet from the sunlight, it would potentially be uh, possible to reduce the total light coming 
to the surface of our planet by about 1.6%, which is actually enough to overcome about 2 degree uh, temperature increase on the surface. But since the temperature might increase by as much as 10 degrees, we might need to place a few of these rings in orbit. Um, now, naturally there are some other solutions to this very interesting problem that we're facing in the next uh, few decades. And one of them was actually based on the fact that we know that when there is a volcanic eruption, which unfortunately I can't really simulate here, but we can try to simulate this by colliding a random asteroid with our planet. So when there is a volcanic eruption, uh, the amount of material released into the atmosphere often reduces the temperature by one to two degrees for as long as five years. Um, so some of the more extreme examples would be uh, Krokatoa, which uh, is, I don't actually exactly know what part of Indonesia it's in, but it's somewhere uh, in this region. And oh, wow, okay, I just destroyed the planet Earth. Sorry, sorry, Earth. But anyway, Krakatoa, when it erupted back in the 1800s, reduced the temperature for like six years and um, caused the world to have much cooler temperatures for, um, for the entire period and caused a lot of famine in countries like Russia, Ireland, Germany, and so on. And actually increased the migration to the United States, which is on this side of the planet, which you can't can't really see right now because of the sunlight not showing it but it's it's right here and this migration basically helped the united states to grow into the superpower that it is today but that's another story the story we're talking about is by um or is about essentially using various um chemicals that you could release into the atmosphere and potentially reflect the light that way too now, what those chemicals might do to the rest of our planet is still a question, but there are these potential uh, scientific solutions to how we could cool down the planet without reducing the CO2 emissions. Probably not the best solution, but it's still there. But I guess what's interesting about the ringed solution is that um, it would probably actually help develop the space industry to the extremes and would definitely propel us on to the way um, of becoming the interplanetary and interstellar species that we want to become. So maybe just maybe this is actually not such a crazy idea after all. Now, will this create a huge amount of space junk as a result? Very likely yes, but this would also help us understand their orbital dynamics a little bit better and possibly create new techniques on how to uh, put interstellar and interplanetary objects into orbits um, and make it very effective and cheap. So for all we know, this might actually be a solution to the global warming after all. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video and I wanted to briefly introduce this idea of the ring that will hopefully prevent global warming. It might do, we might do it and it might, it might actually help us or we might just have to reduce the carbon emissions the old way by not consuming so many fossil fuels. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's finish this video by essentially striking our planet with a random moon and watching the results as it occurs in almost real time. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.